Hello everyone, this is JJ and I'm a fourth year medical student. Today I thought I would talk about what doctors do in the hospital, specifically what kind of work interns do in the hospital. So I was just in New York doing my sub I and electives, which gave me some knowledge about what doctors do in the hospital. So usually you go to work at around 6 or 6.30 a.m., but work doesn't start then. Work starts before that. So before going to work, some people like to pre-chart on their patients, which means you look at the patient's file and just check out who the patient is, what kind of conditions they have, and what was their history before. And when you get to work at around 6 a.m., you get sign out from night floats. And this means that the doctor who is covering the night shifts will update you about your patients. You know, did they sleep well? Did they have any issues, such as any pain, any fever, falls or bleeding, etc.? And they'll update you about your patients when you weren't there to cover your patients. And once you get the sign up from the night float, you start with pre-rounding. So pre-rounding means that you go to the patient, see how they're doing, if they have any complaints, if they need anything, you just, you get information about the patient's status and you actually look, see the patient in person. So your morning can vary depending on how many patients you carry and how complex your patients are. So in New York, I had about three to four patients. And in the workroom, you'll find medical students, interns, residents, all working together. And you run the list with the senior resident. And what that means is you update the senior residents about your patient status, how they've been doing, or if there's any changes to their status. And you discuss your assessment and plan with your senior resident so that you can present it to rounds. So you not only assess the patient status, but you also need to think about what to do next and how to treat the patient. And rounds usually start at around 8 a.m. And in rounds, you discuss with the whole team, including the attending, about what's going on with the patients and how to best treat them. Rounds can be sitting or standing, but I usually had sitting rounds. And we would first talk about the new patients, go over their history, go over their medications, family history, to organize what kind of complaints they have and what kind of conditions they have and what should be the next steps for treatment or diagnosis. And at 10 a.m., we have an interdisciplinary round, also called IDR, in which we gather around with not only doctors and medical students, but also social workers, case workers, nurse managers, PT, OT. And we discuss things like when to discharge the patient, where to discharge the patient. If the patient can't pay hospital fees, how do we help them out in this case? Do they have visas to stay in the hospital or any social issues. If the patient's family wants to have meeting about goals of care discussions, this is when we discuss when we should do this. And it really depends on the attending and the team regarding how long rounds last. It can last from one hour, but I've had rounds that last up to seven and eight hours. But once rounds are done, you go back to your workroom with your medical students and residents and interns, and you get to work on the computer. So you start off with things like orders, if you want any blood work or any labs that needs to be done, you need to put in the order so it gets done. Or things like ordering medications or ordering imaging for the patients, you need to go through that. And the second thing you do is you call consults. So you consult other medical specialties. You may have very specialized medical questions. So you talk to other doctors from different fields to figure out what you can do for the patients. So when I was doing my sub-internship, a lot of my consults were to specialties such as infectious disease, gastroenterology, psychiatry, surgery, urology or nephrology and other subspecialties of internal medicine as well. And you can do this by calling them or messaging them on the electronic medical records. And you also need to go over things like electrolytes. Check out your patient's labs, see if anything needs to be replenished or changed or needs to be monitored. You also write notes as well. So if your patient was just admitted, you write the admissions note on the electronic medical record to tell a story about who the patient is, what kind of conditions they have. Or if they've been in the hospital for more than a day, you write progress notes to record how the patients have been doing since admission. You also need to update the family or the primary care doctor about the patients as well. So I remember one time I called the primary care doctor that their patient was admitted and the doctor was really excited that the inpatient team had called him to get more information about the patient and to also update the PCP about how their patient is doing. This is really beneficial because the PCP is going to be the one taking care of the patient after discharge. 
So you always need to be communicating with lots of people. Oh, and one thing about rounds, sometimes you may see all the patients with attending, or you may see only some patients with attending, but usually you see new patients with the attending and the full team, and then the attending will see the old patients by him or herself. In the afternoon, at around 2 or 3 p.m., we have afternoon rounds, and the attending will come back to the work room, the room to check base about patient status. Is anyone really sick? Do they have a fever, pain? How's their blood pressure? How's their heart rate, etc. And you can also have teaching going on by the residents or the fellows or the attendings. Sometimes the team will ask the medical students to prepare a presentation about different medical guidelines or presentations about different medical conditions and how to treat it. So there's some teaching going on or if there are any updates to medical information, that's when we do that. So you can see that a lot of things happen in the morning for doctors. So I'm not really a morning person, but then working like this kind of makes you become a morning person. So after the afternoon rounds, the attending goes and does his or her work, like write notes, check other things as well. And if we have any other work that we didn't finish, like messaging the nurses about the patients or messaging the physical occupational therapists, messaging the speech language pathologist who come to help patients swallowing needs. We may also go see the patients. So when I was finished with my work, I used to go check up on my patients just to say hello and make sure that they know that they're being cared for. And if your work is done, you've done all everything, like notes, orders, consults, seeing patients, teaching, discussions, and everything. The residents may have some mercy and let you go home early, but before you go home, you still have things to do. You have this thing called sign out. So you sign out your patients to the doctors who will be covering your patients overnight. They're the night doctors. So you need to tell the night float doctor about your patient. So give them a brief history about what kind of conditions they have and what they need to do overnight or what they need to be aware about. So if this patient sometimes has fever, the night float doctor can be aware about these fever episodes. And you also update them about what to do if events happen. So for example, if the patient has a fever over 38 degrees Celsius, what should they do? If they have another pain crisis, what kind of medication should you give? What kind of medication should you not give? If their labs are off, what should you give them? And when should you call a code so that the whole medical team comes, etc. Just so that the patients can be safe when the primary team is not covering the patients. And when you go home, you're pretty tired from working, but you may also need to do work at home. So for example, you may look into research studies that is pertinent to your patients to present during discussions the next day. Or you may study about diseases that you may have forgotten a little bit about, about how it presents, what kind of treatment to use, etc. And doctors always have some kind of test that they need to do. So if you have the USMLE test coming up, you study for those. Or if you're a doctor and you need to take the boards for your specialty, you may also need to study for that too. Before medical school, I didn't really know the specifics about what doctors do. But having gone through medical school, I realized that there's a lot of work that doctors do in the hospital, but this work may be unseen by other people. So yeah, this is the perspective of a medical student on what interns do in the hospital and hopefully what I'll be doing next year as well.